All right, welcome back. So I got another quick package delivered from the um, Smart Guy IR. It's gonna be a thermal imaging camera. Just a quick unboxing real quick, no big deal. Almost there. Nice. Now that's nice. That's a really nice quality packaging you got there. Wow, who would have thought? Dang, that looks good. So yeah, that's going to be the uh, PF, that's the pocket, PF um, 210, I believe that is. So check out that packaging. I'm telling you, man, these, these uh, thermal imagers, they're definitely outdoing themselves with the packaging these days. And not just that, but the quality. So we've got here a little tab to open it up. All right, here we go. Very, very quality. So there you go. So you've got the camera there in a nice case. Look at that. Man, that looks good. Very high end. So if you can see all that uh, sophistication going on there. And then in here, we simply have just the cable, USB cable. The charging plug and that's really it let's go ahead and take a look at it and then you've got this here dongle wrist strap or whatever so that way you can strap it onto your hand or whatever so yeah that looks really nice really high and you got some dedicated programmable buttons here nice rubber power button here it just feels very high end and it's nice and slim as well. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and capture some footage of this real quick and uh, hold tight, we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick uh, demonstration, show you show you a little bit around the camera. It's a really nice camera. Uh, well, once again, it's got the, as you can see, this is the PF210. Here, this here is the IR sensor, visible light camera. But then we've also got the laser, laser distance meter, which measures uh, basically the distance of an object. So as you can see, I had a little bit of time to you know, demo this thing in the field a bit, mess around with it. And I like it so far. I'm not going to lie about it. It's really nice, very nice quality. As you can see, it looks pretty good. This doesn't actually do video. This is just a straight camera. So you're not actually able to see, uh, I'm not going to be able to record video, but I will upload some of the stills, as you can see. But one thing I found about this camera is it's super user friendly. So right here you've got F1 and F2, these are going to be uh, dedicated buttons that you can actually program. All you have to do is hold down the button and it'll take you to a list of different options you can actually program. So I've got this. F2 is at image, um, that's set to image mode. And then F1 is set to calibration. Okay, so I just, if I want to go back to my image, I tap the shutter button. And you can see I can cycle through. Uh, that's going to be visible light image. This here is going to be your visible light IR overlay. Yeah, the cool thing about this, you can actually adjust the opacity simply by hitting this here. And that will, that's 100% IR. Let's do 50%, there's visible light. So another thing, the cool thing about this thing as well, it's a lot more user friendly than most cameras. Like if I want to actually align the image, I'm just going to go ahead and swipe like such. And you can see that image is locking in. As you can see, you can swipe up and down. That's going to line the image up. Then we've got, that's going to be your um, fusion, kind of like with FLIR's MSX. Same thing, if I want to line it up, you just swipe on the screen that, that moves. You see how the uh, visible image is going out of focus, out of alignment. Now we just line it up like that. Super user friendly. Full infrared right there. Okay, and back to visible light. So me personally, I usually just use the infrared um, by itself. I just like the way it looks. I like the way the other stuff just seems a little bit um, cumbersome and you know, involved. 
So now I'm going to hit the F1 to calibrate. As you can see, all that's doing is it's, you can hear that little tick. That's just putting the shutter over the sensor for a split second and basically uh, recalibrating uh, the sensor. Okay, once again, we've got a bunch of options. Laser pointer is pretty cool, so I like to change. I'm going to go ahead and select my F1 laser pointer. Once again, hit the shutter to get back to. Now, if you see when I hit F1, I've got an actual laser distance uh, measurement device. So I can actually, if you see the little, i got to go to visible light image here. You'll be able to see a little red dot. Yeah, well, you can't really see it. But not only does it give you a red dot, it actually also displays the distance from the object, which is really cool. So let's see here. So yeah, you should see that there. Let me focus out. See, there's the red dot there. Okay, yeah, and I found it to be pretty powerful because you can actually uh, save that data on within the image itself. So that way, um, when you're taking these um, measurements and things like that, you can pretty much know how far away you were from the object. Not only that, but now when I take a snapshot, like such, wait, hold on. It's in sm smart calibration, I'm gonna go back to, you have to be in IR mode in order to do a, a smart image. So I take that snapshot, showing the distance away. Now if I hit this here, auto capture, watch this. It's kind of strange. I mean, it traces the hottest point. So like say there was a box, a proper box, it'll actually, that, that outline there, you can erase it. You can do your own custom. So I can erase that and just do my own, but you can do manual. And what that's going to do is I can actually draw around the area, the problem area, and that will save in the image. Exit out of that. But the auto is pretty cool too. I need to get something hot that I can actually see a little bit better. So basically what that does, it actually measures out as you can see I hit when I hit auto it's basically drawing a line around and it'll pretty much do the as you can see up at the very top here it's showing the average uh, min max temperature average temperature and it's showing the square meters which is 0.02 so the the perim I guess the actual area of that area that it drew out I can just hit select there that's going to save it to my images now if I want to go to my images, just hit the three dots there. I can see this here picture. Gallery. Sorry for the focus, guys, but so there's my gallery there. You can see all the little pictures. Okay, so if I hit these three dots, hit the gear, I'm gonna turn off intelligent cal calibrate. And if you turn off that intelligent calibrate, it's not going, it's no longer going to do the automatic drawing box thing. But now if I take a picture, you can see I can go straight to the library right from, I can go back just by hitting the shutter button. So watch this again. Took the picture, hit this thumbnail here. That's going to take me directly to the library. I can, so yeah, I can view the image. I'm viewing that image now. And then if I want to go back to my taking a picture, I hit the shutter button. And then that's going to go back to my uh, live view. So it's really, this is kind of like a workhorse camera. It's got a lot of very quick features. It's, it's quick to use, very sleek design. Obviously, it's got the USB-C here, which is cool. Quick charging as well. It takes a um, higher current charger. It's also got a nice little... That's for your tripod mount. Battery power, the battery um, life on this lasts about four hours based on the specs. So you can go ahead and select your visible light uh, resolution. I can do five megapixels or I can just do 640 by 480. That's fine. Okay. A lot of cool features. Laser ranging, that's going to be for your laser pointer. Brightness.
Let's see here. Now another cool thing here, you can actually select your atmospheric temperature, reflected temperature, which is super important, relative humidity, target distance. Okay. You got actual image tags. So that's going to be all the data that you want captured within the image, which is pretty sweet. Auxiliary buttons. Another cool thing about this as well, you can actually connect this to Wi-Fi, and there's actually a cloud storage where you can actually share your photos uh, virtually through the cloud, which I haven't used that yet, but I might have to give that a shot as well. Temperature, you can select Fahrenheit. Like I said, this only does meters or yards. No, no inches or feet. That's fine. Automatic shutdown, automatic sleep. So, yeah, it's pretty... Pretty nice camera, I'm not gonna lie about it. Another thing I really liked about this camera as well is the fact that you can actually set your range. So right now it's in auto, but I can select here, this range here, and you can actually, that's just selecting the intensity, or I can just select manual here. That's just gonna, I can turn it up and down. You can either use the light for a flash or a flashlight. Um, what's your palettes? Okay. This here I can actually select targets. So you can select, I don't know about how many boxes, but I select this here box. That's going to be, so now it's going to basically, everything within this box, the sensors are going to read. And I can do multiple of those boxes as well. So I can just say another box here, move that over to the side and then I'll have you can actually have some selected in that box so yeah it's pretty cool so yeah it's pretty much it it's, it's like I said this is more of a workhorse camera it's got actually a water resistant IP rating so it's not waterproof but it's water resistance another thing I might have actually added is maybe seeing the shape of this this lens assembly I wouldn't mind having a cover to go over that to protect it while you have in your bag. I usually keep it in the case anyway, but for those that don't want to keep it in the case, I think that would be nice. Other than that, it's really pretty pretty well basic, you know, straightforward camera. Definitely gonna go ahead and show you some in the field examples, photos and things like that, how the photos look, uh, image quality blown out with um, on the video, so that way you can see how they actually blow out to, you know, usable size, but a really nice camera really nice quality I just like the fact that it's, it's pretty much got everything built in your laser distance measurement tool infrared camera so this is the PF210 by guide sense smart and I will say this camera is, is really quick to use it's very functional um, they definitely everywhere to me like all the areas where um fluke and a lot of the bigger manufacturers missed out they kind of picked that up like once again I'll show you this whole I can, I'm going to get rid of these. Just get rid of those analysis points, clear those out. So, you know, just this, just the ability to be able to simply swipe your image into alignment like that. I mean, that's really cool. I don't think I've seen an imagery yet that does that. And then just being able to adjust, manually adjust my sensitivity, thermal uh sensor sensitivity like that uh, having multiple adjustment points for that I know FLIR has got that one touch where you can actually select the point on the screen and it'll adjust based off of the actual temperature or contrast of that one the spot you select which seems pretty cool as well but this I like this one a lot better okay so another really powerful uh, feature or use for these uh, thermal imagers is uh, using them commercial buildings that have multiple units now this commercial location I was at in particular had about four or five package units on the rooftop and sometimes it's hard to tell which areas are being heated by which unit. So with this one I went ahead and turned the thermostat on and waited a few minutes to let the system run and I was able to look up at the ceiling with well, only one system running and see which actual registers were warming up, heating up quickly. Then I was able to actually locate and verify which zones were being 
heated by which unit. Okay, so I just wanted to shoot a little, another video that had a little bit more thermal contrast here. As you can see I just pretty much boiled some water in the microwave and uh, you can actually see the steam rising up off it. That's how sensitive this camera actually is. Now if you look behind, if you look on that reflection on the refrigerator there, that little hot spot, the crosshair is on now, that's exactly why we have to um, enter in the thermal reflection value or just the reflective temperature. That reflected temperature is 103 degrees. As you see if I go right next to it, it's 70 degrees. So take a look here. You see on my camera, watch when I get onto that reflection. It jumps up to 118. Now back to 70. That's the thermal reflection that we're having to always um, be aware of. So as you can see, with the proper contrast, it just looks a whole lot better. The image is a lot more crisp. We've got the temperature of 181 degrees. And as you can see, it's cooling down pretty rapidly. And I'm just going to take a couple snapshots here. That way you can actually, because the video camera is not doing it full justice. I'm recording it with my phone camera. You're not getting the full quality. So, once again, we can select. This is what I was talking about with the auto function. So if I go hit these three dots here. All right. Now I just go to settings. Let's put our save and IntelliJ Calibrate back on. And now we'll go back. Watch what happens when I take a snapshot now. Hit that. Now I hit auto. Now what this does is it will actually trace the hottest spot. And it will show the square meters and everything up here. So if I save that, you'll be able to see how that looks. Um, and like I said, that could be helpful for you know, inspections, if you have a really, uh, say there's a, whether it's HVAC or home inspection, say there's like a, say you point your camera to the ceiling and it's showing really hot spot in the ceiling, you can pretty much, it'll trace around that area and you can pretty much know, okay, you've got this many square feet, this many square meters of insulation that's been, that's missing out of the, uh, out of the um, attic. So it's pretty, pretty useful, useful feature. So the hottest spot is 165 degrees, coldest is 56. Pretty basic tool, it's pretty, you know, high quality, nice lightweight, compact design. If you're looking for a compact camera where you don't need to record video, this is definitely a recommendation, I'm not gonna lie about it. Super powerful camera, easy to use, which pretty much, the ease of use to me is really probably the, the strength of this camera. Just these F, these um, assignable keys and how quickly you can just reassign them like that. I think that's really powerful. How quickly you can get back to the uh, shutter uh, live mode. It's, I mean, they really thought the actual interface out very well with this. This is very well executed. This also comes with a charger, a couple lanyards. I guess these are called lanyards, which is, I definitely would be using those because. You don't want to drop this thing, so you always wrap that around your wrist. You always want to wrap that around your wrist while using it. So you yeah, a nice little charging cable charger and a pretty decent uh, manual. So it's it's pretty stout. Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.